the beauty of art is that it can pull you in in a way that can transform a room in a matter of seconds. I am very grateful for uh, Kresge that giving us uh, the free range, creative freedom to have this opportunity to collaborate with amazing uh, Detroit artists. Kresge is creating a situation where artists want to come and work here. I'm Christina DeRose, the director of Kresge Arts in Detroit. Kresge Arts in Detroit is generously funded by the Kresge Foundation and we are administered by the College for Creative Studies. And each year there's a film series that happens. In the past, there's been a short documentary style that was really the format of the films for uh, quite a few years and it worked brilliantly. What it didn't allow for, however, was the real connection for the creativity of the filmmakers and the creativity of the artists to come together. For years, we heard feedback where artists said the films are fantastic and we'd like to work directly with filmmakers. And it showed fantastic results, of course, last year and again this year. And it's really, again, just trusting artists. So saying yes to opening up the genres. And at the beginning of the fellowship, having the artists uh, who receive fellowships actually select the filmmakers that they would like to work with. And then we go through a matching process that Donald Harrison and Seven Cyl Cylinders handled brilliantly in order to make sure that even from the get-go, those partnerships and those collaborations are also led by the fellows themselves and by the filmmakers coming in saying, hey, I wanna be a part of this. Once you do good matching in terms of who you want to collaborate, that's setting you off for success. And um, we saw that play out throughout the whole production of the series. When Kresge put, gave us the list of the filmmakers who were participating and links to their work and their websites. I spent a couple of days going through all of them. I didn't know what I wanted to do for the film. I wasn't sure if it was going to be documentary style, but I knew that I wanted the colors to, to really stand out. I ended up going with Real Clever Films, and they definitely have a sense for color and um, saturation on screen. And I also noticed in their body of work, as I said, a variety of body types and sizes and colors and shapes that they worked with and lit and filmed beautifully. My job is basically like listening deeply of all these artists because Kresge picked them for reasons and they're all phenomenal and really amazing human being. So just listening and then walk together through, you know, filmmaking process. We talked a lot and because of that freedom uh, given by Kresge, we were able to make a uh, direction very quickly. And then we both have very satisfied resort. And every each artist was very clear about what the purpose of this video and what they want to be uh, represented in here and the storytelling process, who do they want to include or not. So having that free range was really big help. One of the, the richest parts of the, the series was just watching the different ways in which people took this opportunity to do something creative and, and really take it somewhere interesting. And I think you ended up with a very creative, very diverse set of films. I mean, not even format wise, you know, I was blown away to see like, oh, wow, we have like, you know, widescreen cinematic format and square going with Brian's, you know, the square shape of the photography. Oksana, one of the filmmakers who did two of the pieces used high eight video cameras from the 80s to create this whole triptych approach. The authenticity really comes through in each of them. Jasmine and also Jenny's film, those two for me really resonate because of the, you know, the experience and the ability to hear such incredible power coming through and authenticity and a call for the world that we all deserve to come forth and a real clear calling out of where the, the falling short is happening now. How much Jasmine showed me trust in the very beginning was really, really powerful. When she came to my place and we talked like two hours uh, in like she shared her lived experience as a black woman and queer person and mother. And it touched me very deeply. So working with, the, with her was really healing for me, because she's someone that healing is possible, uh, even though what she experienced. I will say the one that Graham White uh, created with Toko Shiki was really cool because it's so outside of the box of what a an artist portrait would be. There's no words. There's no uh, explaining anything. It's sort of this very 
strange, surreal vignette playing out. And, you know, Graham, he's a metal worker and sculptor. And so his work is getting shown in this very unusual world that they sort of created together. Did you want to say like a heartfelt thanks to all the filmmakers who do this because it is time consuming and the budget is small and oftentimes, or at least with my film crew, they went above and beyond. When people see the films, I hope they get a sense of what Kresge and the artists in this community are trying to build. The last two years of films have reflected what we were all living through collectively in uh, in one way or another from our own position within both uh, the pandemic, within uh, racial reckoning, and that really shows up in the, the content of the films as well as so much more. So continuing to allow Detroiters to tell Detroit stories, and that's again really captured in the title, Spotlight Detroit. It does shine a spotlight on each of the individual artists, but it also shines a spotlight on what's happening within the city of Detroit and just in general and what happens with artists, with creativity. Mm -hmm.